Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. I'm just in here drinking my morning coffee. Again, I know whether I'm drinking real coffee or not has become a point of major controversy. That is in fact real coffee. Real coffee. That was a real sip. But it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. For those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click like down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the little notification the bell next to it ring my bell baby all right guys i have had numerous people ask me to discuss the newest installment with andrew zaragoza zaragoza it sounds like a dragon it sounds like a dragon <laughs> like i think i'm gonna make a wild character named zaragoza It'd be like a awesome elf or something but Andrew Zaragoza did another installment of the Sarmageddon series, and I have said that I want to really keep my channel positive these days. We want to stick with positive criticism, positive content, um, and avoid a lot of the nonsense, but this is one of these cases where so many people have asked me. I did start the series, and I think we can, we can spin this in a positive educational direction um, without throwing any, any insults towards Andrew. Because realistically, guys, I'm at a point in this channel in my life where I don't want to insult people. I don't want to be little people. I just, I don't want to do that. We want to give positive information that can help other people out there. And the problem we have with this, this Sarmageddon project is that it was, it was really reckless and wasn't well thought out. Um, and, and realistically, as I had said before, I could have coached Andrew and gotten him a lot further without him putting anything into his body in that same time period than what he got from the SARMs. And he saw some side effects from a lot of it, you know, and it's something that I had said. I think the things like the MK677 that he took, which is legal. It's not illegal to, to take it or to purchase it. It's a research chemical. Um, but notice what happened to his resting insulin. That was a major concern for me, and it kind of comes back to the point that I've made that uh, other than for bodybuilders, I, I, I'm not a fan of HGH. I don't think it's a particularly useful substance for people to put in their body to have elevated levels of. And the, the side effects of the MK seem to be very similar to when people are using significant amounts of growth. Which makes sense because it doubles or more your, your HGH production. And it's kicking it up pretty high. I mean, to, to the amount that people get from using a, a low dose of the real deal. And that, that's based upon actual research and blood work. And it does stay there and it's elevated. Um, but, you know, the, the resting insulin levels are really, really high. Uh, that's a concern. You know, you combine that with the elevated triglycerides. That's, that is a very bad long-term situation. Um, then we have the case of his own testosterone was suppressed a bit. And we kind of come over to the point that I make to people, guys. SARMs are just mild, technically legal, gray area legality anabolics. That, that's what they are. That's what they are. And they will eventually be completely changed. Uh, Congress will probably pass a bunch of laws and fully outlaw them eventually, just like they always do with stuff like this. It's, it's going to happen. So it is what it is. But right now, that's the area they sit into this gray area with some legal loopholes involved. And, and so people can legally purchase them. And he did. And I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to tell anybody how or where. That's not the purpose of any of this. Because um, I'd rather you guys not use them. So he did all of this. And then he went on to do PCT. Um, and then he stands right there and... Uh, this is where people get silly. It's like you already went with SARMs instead of real gear. You already suffered health effects, got, got minimal gains, and then he decides, instead of doing the traditional route, what everyone else would have done, what an endocrinologist who works with athletes coming off a of gear, who specializes, would have done for you, is, yeah, exactly what they would have done. ACG, clone, and stuff like that, right? And then he tried to say, well, I wanted to try an alternative to this HCG because I'm scared of needles. Like if you're scared of sub-Q, all right, sub-Q, we're not talking about intermuscular, intravenous sub-Q. I mean, if you're scared of a sub-Q needle that you need for health purposes, for a medical purpose, um, I, I don't see, you know, I don't want to insult somebody, but it's like, bro, that's maybe why you, your, your pain threshold and skittishness is that, that high. That could be why he struggles in the weight room. 
could be why he struggles to get strong. I don't know. And I guess my point with that is that when you're talking about the HCG is given to you by a doctor because you're going to have to do it several times a week, it's the same thing a, a diabetic uses, right? It, it is literally no different than what a diabetic does after every single meal, okay? It's, it's no different. Millions of old people who are type 2 diabetics have to do this. They have to do a sub-Q shot the same way ACG is done multiple times a day their entire life, okay? I've had a grandma who had to do this. It's like at a certain point you just look at that and go, it's not, it's not the same thing. Um, so he's talking about he's going to take this one in his cheek that's supposed to be just as good. And then he says, well, no one has heard of it. I asked around and literally no one has heard of it. Because he's like, I want to do something different. Um, different hasn't worked too well for him so far. So he wants to do something different. Uh, and But then he says, no one else has heard of it. No one knows anything about it. And I ended up not going that route also. But I just want you guys to know that's a good option. Well, if no one that you know of has heard it or used the light, it, no medical experts, no gear users, no one that you know knows anything about it, how do you know it's a good it's a good method? I'm gonna say that's that's not good advice to give. Um, I mean, up to this point, we look at what happened with Andrew, and this is not an example of what to do, guys. For the people who are out there considering dabbling on the dark side. Um, he has not done anything correctly in terms of his training, his results, uh, the fact that he's got all these side effects and he's PCT afterwards. And then instead of going the traditional known effective methods, he decides he's going to go off into left field. And here's the thing. All of this over and over the counter product, because now he's like, well, I'm going to go out to Connecticut to these these other people who have basically a product for sale. And essentially what happened here, I'm going to explain what happened. They paid him for that. They probably paid him. That's an advertisement for them. He probably, and I could be wrong, either he's really gullible or he got paid because he didn't do any research. Because he flies all the way from California out to Connecticut for his, his HRT. And we need to quit calling it PCT. You're getting testosterone pellets. Okay, that is that is TRT. That's HRT. That is not PCT anymore. PCT is post cycle therapy to get your own production back up. You're having exogenous testosterone implanted in your body for slow release. Right? You basically have chosen an alternative HRT. The problem, problem here, uh, the woman who's doing it is. Is saying, oh, this is bioidentical testosterone. Your body, it's like, whoa, that's that's a hustle. Okay, this is where he didn't do any research. Bioidentical testosterone, and your body won't recognize it as any. It's like, what? That's not how this works. So she goes through the, the painful process, I mean the pellets, what, what she did to, to insert all of that, I mean he got pellets done. Let's come over to the point. You have a guy who just says that he's scared of needles. He's scared of needles. He can't do a sub-Q shot because he's scared of needles, right? And instead, she cuts his hip open and puts, in, puts pellets in. 2,200 milligrams of testosterone pellet. Do you understand how much more extreme that is than, than even an intermuscular injection? Um, <laughs> I don't get it. And the same thing, he gets there and she's basically trying to claim that it's superior to normal HRT. No, it's not. There's no evidence of that. Nothing. This is a hustle. It's a hustle. Um, he just got paid to endorse a hustle. And I mean, it gets even worse because she's like, oh, because he works out so hard, I'm, I'm, I'm having to give him a bit more. Because why? Because he, he'll burn through the testosterone in his training. You don't use testosterone up in your training. The amount that's in an implant or an injection or anything administered by your doctor, you don't go through it faster because you lift weights. What? And, you know, that's, that's where we're at with all of this. Essentially, 
you have a guy who, who took an over-the-counter product products, wasn't particularly wise about them, didn't pick, choose to train particularly hard when utilizing it to document a whole series, he ends up suffering from it and needing to go on basically TRT is the decision he said, even doing what he should have done at post-cycle therapy, he goes on full TRT while calling it PCT, ends up flying all the way to another state, endorsing an alternative kooky version of HRT, that is more painful and more complicated than it needs to be is an example of teaching you guys how to use a SARM. I'm trying very, very hard to stay positive and polite at this point. I'm trying very, very hard to stay positive and polite. Let me do this without insulting Andrew. Andrew brother, I think you should, should go back and, and build a base, and I think you should do more research and learn to do this stuff correctly before you get up on camera and demonstrate to people, to an enormous audience of hundreds of thousands of people, how to do these things. Okay, that would, that would be a good thing for you to do. You should probably learn the basics of how to lift, okay, build a base, and go to a real endocrinologist at this point. Not, not any of these kooks or any of this nonsense. And for those who are watching, and they, they, if they stop and watch what I have to say on this, and if you guys watch this and you've watched his series, do not use anything that Andrew did as an example of what to do. Okay, please don't use it. It was pretty bad, and I'm, I'm really surprised that Mark allowed this on his channel. Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.